Hello, everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of Living God. I'm Brother Rodney, and Brother Gerald will be reading today. And we'll be doing a lesson entitled, The Real Israelites. Simply, The Real Israelites. Um, today, you know, as, as of next week, we're going to be dealing with black history. And that's what this uh, lesson is about today, black history. Um, you know, because our, our black history is told, but it's only told for like 400 years ago when we came here on the continent of America. But our, our, um, our uh, history goes back thousands of years. Thousands of years. So we're going to get started in the lesson because we got a lot of things to cover. We got a lot of things to cover, so everybody just calm down and want everybody to take a seat. Close that cabinet door back there, and uh, we're going to get started. All right, we're going to start this off in Revelations, the second chapter, Revelations 2. Revelations, the second chapter. Revelations 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Revelations 2 and 8. Go ahead and read it. And unto the angel of church and Simon write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Uh -huh. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty. He said, I know thy works, thy tribulations and poverty. Go ahead. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, uh -huh. but are the synagogues of Satan. Now, so he said, I know them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So you got people around here saying that they are Jews, but they are not, and, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Now, we're going to deal with him, uh, we're just going to touch on him just a little bit in this lesson, but most assuredly, in the next lesson that we do, we're going to really touch on. So he said, I know those ones that, are, that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. He said, look, Israel is going to be poor. But anyway, let's go to Genesis, the 25th chapter. Let's go back real quick, and let's go look at uh, the real Israelites, which came out of Jacob, and then we're going to look at his brother Esau where they were born at. So we're going to Genesis 25th chapter, Genesis 25 and 19, and I hope that brother that uh, uh, called me the N-word this morning um, on, uh, on uh, YouTube, wherever he was on, I hope he uh, listening today. Um, I don't have nothing against the brother, nothing like that. I, I suppose he must be an Ishmaelite or whatever, but that's cool too. So, uh, But we're going to deal with uh, Ishmael today a little bit too. Now, if you don't believe what the Bible said, then you can kick rocks. Amen. Anyway, Genesis 25 and 19. Genesis 25 and 19. Go ahead. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Uh-huh. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Uh-huh. The daughter of Bethel, the Cyrene, and a Pedram. The sister of Laban, the Cyrene. Uh huh. And Isaac, and Isaac entreated, entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Now, because she couldn't have no children, so she was barren. Go ahead and read. And the Lord was entreated of him. Uh huh. And Rebecca was, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. And she conceived now. Go ahead and read. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? Uh huh. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Now, stop right there. He said, Two nations are in your womb. Now, did God call this or did man call this? God, God called this, didn't he? He said, Two nations. You know, because people got a problem with, well, they got the same mother and same father. How can they be two, two, two different nations? Ask the Lord. <laughs> well, you see him ask him. Because he's the one who said it was going to be two minor people, two different nations. Go ahead and read. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Uh-huh. 
And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. And the elder is going to serve the younger. Now we're going to deal with him more in the next kind of lesson. But go ahead and read some more. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh -huh. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Esau. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Uh -huh. And his name was called Jacob. Now, it made no mention, mention of what color Jacob was, did it? It just said Esau came out red and hairy all over. And then here comes his brother. He grabbed the heel of Esau, and then they called his name Jacob. Didn't mention his color, did it? Go ahead and finish that. And Isaac was three score years old when she buried him. Uh-huh. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was man of and Jacob was a plain man, uh -huh. dwelling in tents. Now, so now we're gonna go now, we're gonna pick up uh, Israel or Jacob's children. So let's go over to Exodus. We're gonna deal with Esau later on. Alright? Exodus 1, and we're gonna pick up the verse 1. Exodus 1 and 1. Exodus 1 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. Children of Israel. This is Jacob. Because Jacob's name we saw in the last lesson. His name was changed to, Jacob's name was changed to what? Israel. Right? So now these are his sons. Go ahead. Which came into Egypt. Uh -huh. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Now look, they came into Egypt. And we're going to find out Egypt are black people or what we call today African people. Go ahead and read. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, uh -huh. Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, uh -huh. Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loans of Jacob were 70 souls, uh -huh. for Joseph was in Egypt already. Go ahead. And Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty. Uh -huh. And the land was filled with them. Go ahead. Now stop right there. We're going to skip down to verse 10. He said they increased mightily, right, and the land increased with them. Go ahead, skip down to verse 10. Go ahead. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let's get that video ready. Go ahead. Let us they multiply, and it come to pass that when the when there falleth out any war, they join also under our Now this our is what enemies. the Egyptians were saying. You know, let us deal wisely with them. And he said, he said, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, it come to pass. That when uh, they fall out of any war, they join also uh, to our enemies and fight against us. And so get them out, up out of the land. Now this is what the Egyptians are saying about the Israelites. Because there's so many of them. You know Israel, they want to have babies. You understand? So the Egyptians are like, uh-uh, there's too many of them. So, so, uh, uh, so they say, you know, let's get them out of the land. Verse 11, go ahead. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters uh -huh. to afflict them with their burdens. Now, he said they set over them taskmasters uh, to afflict them with their burdens. Uh huh. And they built for Pharaoh treasures, cities, Fentham, and Ramses. Uh huh. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied the and grew. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Go ahead. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Uh huh. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Uh huh. And they and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Uh huh. In mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. Now we're gonna stop right there. Now we're gonna show this uh, uh, slide right here. Now this says the Egyptians slave flogging and Egyptian slave flogging. An Egyptian slave endures a flogging in this fresco from a tomb of the New Kingdom. The number of slaves in Egypt increased dramatically. 
during the new kingdom, 1570 to 1085, that's supposed to be B.C., as a result of foreign conquest. The Israelites were enslaved during this period. Now you see the Egyptian flogging the Israelite right there. And everybody looked like that guy said, oh no, not me next. But anyway, so you see all three of them though are black, right? Mm -hmm. Egyptian flogging an Israelite. Amen. Now let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. We're going to go to the next slide. But we see now that everybody in here is black. Everybody in Now we're going to the, the next slide. We're going to look at the, uh, some Canaanite captives right here. Now, because he said in verse, uh, what is that, verse uh, uh, 14, and, and they made their lives uh, bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. So they serve and now, they, and they, they, this is brick making captives right here. Now it says brick making captives. This painting from a tomb at Thebes shows in detail captive workmen manufacturing bricks. A task force on the Hebrews by Egyptian pharaohs. And look what color these uh, Israelites are right here. They're all black, aren't they? Yes, sir. We know that the is we know that the Egyptians are black. Everybody knows that the Egyptians now are black, right? Yes, but look at these e Israelites right here. They black too, aren't they? Yes, but we're gonna get down into this. So let's go now. Let's go to we're going to uh, uh, Genesis the tenth chapter. We're going to Genesis, the 10th chapter. We're going to Genesis 10. Everybody got it? Man. Go ahead and start. Read verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, uh -huh. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh -huh. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Uh -huh. Now skip down to verse 6. Now go ahead and put the slide on. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, uh -huh. and Fat, and Canaan. Okay, hold on. Slow down for a minute. Okay, read that verse 1 again. Sorry, read verse 1 again. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, uh -huh. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh -huh. And unto them were sons born after the flood. And unto them were sons born after the flood. So, we're not, so what we can concentrate on right here is Ham. So skip down to verse 6. Skip down to verse 6. Go ahead. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, uh -huh. and Phet, and Canaan. And put, and Canaan. So now, so he said, the sons of Ham, uh, 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 Cush, Mizraim, put, and Canaan. Now, let's go. We're going to look at this right now. Now, this is, this, this is in Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, which is right here. It says Ham. I'll just read it right from right here. That, well, maybe I should. So I can't see that too well. But it said, Ham, the, uh, the uh, youngest son of Noah, born probably about 95 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons uh, to live through the flood, he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites. Now, wait a minute now. Huh? He's not the father of the Negroes? Who are the Negroes? Y'all, yeah, sure. they got to be scared to say it. Y'all know we the Negroes? <laughs> right? He said he is the father of the Egyptians, the Canaanites, uh, the uh, Ethiopians. But he is not the father of the Negroes. So now where do we come from? Now we just fall out the sky. You understand? I'm going to show you. We got a history just like everybody else has a history. A rich history. And we saw some of that last Sabbath, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Now, so one of his sons was Mizraim too, right? Now, we're going we're gonna to read about, we're going to read Mizraim. Who is Mizraim? Mizraim. 
son of Ham, uh -huh. progen progenitor of Egyptians. The people. progenitor of the so, uh, so Ham's son, Mizraim, is the father of the Egyptians. Go ahead and read. People of in Africa, Hamic people. Hamitic people. You finish that? Yep. All right, so Mizraim, I'm just showing you now, this son of uh, Ham, which is Mizraim, he is the father of the Egyptians. He's also the father of the Canaanites, too, isn't he? Now, let's we're gonna read this uh this slide right here. We're gonna read this fresco right here. <clears throat> Okay, Canaanite captives. Now these are Canaanites. Now look at, notice the beards in every day, right? But it says, Canaanite captives in Egypt being led. Now I got my suspicions about that. But it said, Canaanite captives in Egypt being led before Pharaoh. This release, which portrays the general appearance of Israelites as well as Canaanites. Now wait a minute now. If the Ham had his son was Canaan, Right? Then Canaan looks like Israelites. Then what color are the Israelites? They are black. He said, <clears throat> uh, the general appearance of Israelites as well as Canaan. It is a good representation of the typical Semite of the day. So Abraham was Semitic, wasn't he? Amen. So this is how the Semitic people looked too. They were black. He said right here, note the no more aristocratic features, particularly the finely cut noses and the long hair and beards. Now, that's what makes me suspicious right there. Because who the Lord commanded to wear beards? Israelites, right? He says, uh, it was commonly thought that Israelites had hooked noses, but this was originally a Hittite or Ammonite feature from the temple of Ramesses III in Medinet, Habu, Egypt. Now, look at this. You got these Canaanites which are the sons of Ham, and Ham's not the father of the Negroes, is he? No. But you got these Canaanites right here that look like some Israelites. Mm -hmm. So what color are the Israelites then? Black. They black then, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I want everybody to pay attention to what we read, because what we read today, because we are going to deal with some black history today. We're going to deal with some back of black history. Let's go now. Let's go to Acts, the seventh chapter. Acts 7. Acts 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Acts 7 and 17. Anybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God has sworn to Abraham, uh -huh. the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Now, we're just picking it up like where we left off at over in uh, Exodus, the first chapter. So now the people, they grew and multiplied in Egypt, right? Go ahead and read. So another king arose, which knew not Joseph. Uh -huh. The same dealt, dealt, the same dealt subtly with uh, our Kendrick uh -huh. and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their children to the end they might not live. Go ahead. In which time Moses was born and was exceedingly fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. Uh -huh. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished, nourished him for her own son. Now, wait a minute. Now, Pharaoh's daughter? Pharaoh's daughter would be an Egyptian, wouldn't she? And she would be black, wouldn't she? Yes. And then she took Moses and nourished him up in her home. Now at that time, the uh, the, the Pharaoh was killing the, the children, the two years old and upward. So if Moses was looked like the ones we see now as Jews, the Pharaoh would have known right off the bat, wouldn't he? He would have known right off the off the bat. Now wait a minute, daughter, this ain't uh, none of your child right here. <laughs> this is one of the Hebrew children. If he looked like what the, the, the ones that call themselves Israelis today, if he looked like that. But he grew up in Pharaoh's house, which made him what? Black. 
Otherwise, Pharaoh would have known, wouldn't he? But the Egyptians are black. What's that next verse say? 22. Uh -huh. And Moses was learned in all the wisdoms of the Egyptians uh -huh. and was mighty in words and in deeds. Now he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So the Egyptians taught Moses, didn't they? Yep. Skip down to verse 35. Verse 35. Go ahead. This Moses whom they refused saying who made thee a ruler and a judge. Uh -huh. The same did God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Uh -huh. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea uh -huh. and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall be the Lord your God raised up unto you uh -huh. of your brethren, uh -huh. like unto me, him shall ye hear. Now that's talking about the Lord right there. He said, a prophet like unto the Lord will raise a prophet like unto me of your brethren. And that's talking about the Lord, ain't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's skip that. Let's go now. Let's go to Amos the third chapter. Because we're going to get to the Lord in a minute. Amos the third chapter. Amos 3. Amos 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Amos 3 and 1. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read that. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, uh -huh. O children of Israel, against the whole family which are brought up from the land of Egypt, uh -huh. saying, Go ahead. You, are, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see that? He said, you of all the families of the earth, you only have I known. Therefore, I'm going to punish you for all your iniquities. Now, he's talking to the children of Israel right here, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see something. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Daniel, the ninth chapter. Because he said, I'm going to punish you, Israel, for all your iniquities. Let's go to Daniel, the ninth chapter. Daniel 9. And look what Daniel wrote over here. Daniel 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Daniel 9 and 1. When you get it, go ahead and read it. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asarus, Asarus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year, I tell you what, we gonna read, we gonna read nine. I mean, verse one. Let's pick it up at verse. Uh, uh, pick it up at verse five. Pick it up at verse five. Yeah. Pick it up at verse five. Go ahead and read that. We have sinned it and have committed iniquity. Uh huh. Now, let's, done now look, look at what the children of Israel. It's saying right here, I mean, what Daniel was saying about the children of Israel right here. He said, we have a sin and have committed iniquity. Go ahead and read. And have done wickedly. Uh-huh. And have rebelled, even by departing from the precepts and from the judgments. Uh-huh. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, uh -huh. which spake in thy name to our kings, our prince, and our, uh, and our fathers. And to all the people of the land. Skip down to verse uh, 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his law. Now, now wait a minute. Now you see what he said? Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God and we didn't walk in his law. What a man telling you today. You don't have to keep the law. But you see this is why Israel got punished though, right? Because they didn't keep the law. But now I guess men think that, you know, because when he was talking to Israel, he wasn't talking to us. Well, you still got to do what Israel had to do. Else you're going to get punished too. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Which he said before us by his servants, the prophets. Uh-huh. Now look at what he's going to say, verse 11. Go ahead. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Uh-huh. Even by the party. That, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Stop right there. You see that? He said the curse is poured upon us. You know, you tell brothers and sisters that our people are under curse, they're like, oh, you crazy. We ain't no Israelites. And I used to, I used to tell my friends when I was about 16 years old, well, you know, the, the, the teacher would show us about black history and everything. I just 
Something just didn't fit to me. I'm like, something's wrong. Why is God punishing our people like this? What did we do? What did we do? It wasn't until I was like th almost 30 years old that I found out that we were the children of Israel, and this is why we get punished. But I used to tell my friends when I was about 16 years old, man, something's wrong. We cursed. Man, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, we cursed. Something's wrong, man. I just didn't know what was going on, though. So the Lord opened my eyes up and then I understood what, uh, what was going on with us. But read that verse 11 again. Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, uh -huh. even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Uh -huh. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. Our people are cursed. Go ahead and read. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, uh -huh. the servant of God, Go ahead. because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words. And we're going back to look where he gave you these words and told you that the children of Israel were going to be cursed. He said he hath confirmed his words. Go ahead and read. Which he spake against us and uh -huh. against our judges that judged us uh -huh. by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Now, so now I'm going to reiterate that have not been done to this people, our people, that have been done under, under, under Jerusalem. Now you look and see what has happened to us. And then you tell me, are we the Israelites? We're going to read some things here today. We're going to read some, most of all, Bible. Then we're going to read some history. Then you tell me, are we the Israelites or not? You finished that? Read that one more time. Verse 12. Uh-huh. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges uh -huh. that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Go ahead. As it is written in the law of Moses. All this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God. See, we still don't recognize what's going on with us. The, the, the masses of us don't. Some of us do. Because Israel is blind in part. But the masses of us, most of us don't, still don't know what's going on with us. After all this evil has come upon us. Finish that, go ahead. That we might turn from our iniquities. That we might do what? Turn from our iniquities. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And understand thy truth. And, and understand his truth. And we're going to show you today the truth about our people. Because we are the children of Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. I know y'all have been waiting on it. Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Now look at what, what the Lord told the children of Israel. If you uh, walk righteously before me, I'm going to bless you. But if you don't, I'm going to curse you. We have Deuteronomy 25, uh, 28 and 1. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now look, he said, you, you keep my commandments, I'm going to set you high above all the nations of the earth. Can you imagine that? <laughs> That's the only thing you do is imagine, ain't it? <laughs> he said, I'm going to set you high above all. You mean tell me everything that people wanted understand or they want to uh, get some money or, or uh, 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 learn about whatever in the world they had to come to us. Our people have given up a big thing right here, haven't we? Our forefathers, because they're the ones who've done it to us. And ain't nothing we can do about it to them because they're in the grave, right? Can't do nothing to them, can't say nothing to them about the, to, about the Lord, him punishes us because he warned us, didn't he? Only thing we can do now is take heed, heed to the warning now and turn to him. That's what we can do right now. But go ahead and read. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, 
Blessed shall thou be in the city, uh -huh. and blessed shall thou be in the field. Uh -huh. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Uh -huh. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Verse 6, read that. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, uh -huh. and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. So he said, look, you're going to be blessed. Whatever you do, Israel, you're going to be blessed. Skip down to verse 15. What does that say? But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee. That all and these overtake curses thee. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if you keep my commandments, I'm gonna bless you. If you don't, I'm gonna curse you. Go ahead and read. Curse shall thou be in the city, uh -huh. and church, curse shall thou be in the field. Stop right there. Skip down the verse, because we're gonna come back to these curses, but look at this big curse right here. He said he's gonna do to us. Verse 25, what does that say? The Lord shall cause thee to submit smitten before thine enemies. Uh -huh. Thou shalt go out one way against them go ahead. and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the and earth. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Now that's a big uh, curse there, ain't it? Amen. Now what people you know that have been removed into all the kingdoms of the earth? Now, Jesus told us about this, too. I think we might have read this last Sabbath, but we're going to read it again. Let's go to Luke, the 21st chapter, Luke 21. Luke 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Luke 21 and 20. That is a big curse right there, to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, baby. Amen. <laughs> Luke 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Luke 21 and and 20. Go ahead and read it. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Uh -huh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Uh -huh. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon his people. There's going to be, there's going to be great distress in the land and wrath upon what people? The children of Israel. Because they were dwelling in Jerusalem at this time, right? Right. right. What does verse 24 say? Verse 24. Uh-huh. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword uh -huh. and shall be led away captive into all nations. Ooh, ain't this the same thing Moses just said? Yeah. Say they're going to fall by the edge of the sword they're going to be led away captive into all nations. Now, you know, those people that call themselves Jews, when were they led captive into all nations? Uh -huh. I don't mean to talk about nobody. You know, because I like I had, had a brother, uh, I guess he Ishmael, like called me the N-word this morning. Yeah, he emphasized it too. You understand? But, but that's all right. Cause I hope he tuned it in. Cause you tell me, when we're gonna get to you too. We're gonna get to the Ishmaelites too. Cause the Ishmaelites one had us in slavery for 1400 years. Why ain't nobody saying nothing about that? Everybody talking about the white man is the white man. And yeah, the white man had in slavery because the Lord done it to him. But what about Ishmael? He had us in slavery too. The longest for 1,400 years. And the one, well, I'm going a little bit ahead of myself right now. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Because the Lord told you you're going to be led away captive in all nations, didn't he? But don't know, you know, people don't believe, they say they believe the Bible, then when you start showing them this stuff, they, like, uh, that couldn't be. <laughs> that couldn't be true. I'm like, well, why not? Here's the Bible, we got pictures, we got DNA, we got history, what else you need? Somebody to come back from the ancient times to come up here and tell you who we are? 
mean, you know, you show people everything, and they, especially Israel, they really gone. We couldn't be the Israelites. Hey, look, man, look, here's some DNA right here. <laughs> they still don't believe it. Deuteronomy 28. Well, that's why the Lord said Israel is blind in part. Deuteronomy 28 and 25. Deuteronomy, we're going to pick it back up at 25 again. Verse 25. Go ahead and read that. The Lord shall call thee to spend before thy enemies. Uh -huh. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, uh -huh. and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. We're going to find out how they were removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. But before, before we go there, skip down to verse 36. Go ahead and read it. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. And there shall thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Look at our people. We serve everybody else's God, don't we? But that one that called himself a Jew, he got Judaism, which is really a new religion. People are like, well, do y'all practice Judaism? No. We don't practice Judaism. We practice the Bible. Not Judaism. But look, uh, uh, that one that called himself a Jew, was he led away captive in all nations? He wasn't led away captive in all nations, was he? Nope. Go ahead and read. Verse 37. Uh-huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Look at all the names they got nations. for us when we go to these different countries. We're not just the N-word here in America. You understand? They got the other names for us in other countries. But you don't see them having no name for that one that called himself a Jew, do you? Nope. Everybody pretty much respects him unless you either, you either love him or hate him. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword uh -huh. among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead them. Skip down to verse... 49. Skip down to verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, uh -huh. from the end of the earth, Go ahead. as swift as the eagle fleeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now everybody see, well I ain't going to say everybody because there's young people here, but most of us see roots, right? They came on the ships and got us, didn't they? And then the, uh, uh, the, 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 black, the black slaves, they didn't even know what tongue that the Gentile, or the, well, you might think it was a Gentile, but it really wasn't no Gentile. I'm going to show you who it really was that had the slave ships. But anyway, but we didn't know their tongue, did we? Didn't know what they were saying, but when they got the whips out, we knew what time it was then, didn't we? When they got those chains and everything out, we knew what time it was then, didn't we? Go ahead and read. A nation of fierce countenance, uh -huh. which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Skip down to verse 68, because how did he bring them? Verse 68. How did we, or how did the children of Israel get dispersed into all the kingdoms of the earth? Verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Stop right there. So he said, the Lord shall bring thee into bondage. That's what Egypt re represents, mm -hmm. the house of bondage. He's going to bring you into bondage again with what? Ships. How did we get over here? Ships. ships. Hmm. We got here on ships, didn't we? Yeah. How did the, the slave get into Latin America? Ships. On ships. How did the slaves get into Asia? Ships. On ships. They didn't have to take them on ships in Africa because they were nine tribes already still there. Finish that. Read that over. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spank unto thee. Uh -huh. Thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women uh -huh. and no man shall buy you. Now, we're going to show this slide right here. He said, and you shall be sold uh, to your enemy for bond men and bond women. Now, before we get to the transatlantic slave trade, because see, we always hear about the transatlantic slave trade, but we never hear about the Mohammed, uh, Mohammedan slave trade, which, which I mentioned earlier that the, uh, these Arabs had us in slavery for 1,400 years. 
1,400 years they had us in slavery. So now, we're going to show just a snippet of the Mohammedan slave trade. And this is on, on, Afri on the African soil right here. Now it says, uh, um, we sh okay. Come on, let's get, uh, show the slide. Okay, we good? Yeah. All right, it says, Arab West Africans slave trade. Now, the slaves were being traded on Africa already before the Europeans got. Now, it says right here. Now, look at this. These are Arabs right here. These are Arabs right here. And more Arabs right here say West Africa was part of a major trading network long before the arrival of Europeans. From ancient times, there were trade routes across the, this, the Sahara linking the north and the west, right, of the, of the continent. Camel caravans took salt, copper, horses, and other goods south to West Africa and brought gold, ivory, cola nuts, hides, grain, and slaves back to the north. Now look at this. This is the Arab slave trade right here. We never hear about the Arab slave trade, do we? And they had us in slavery the longest for 1,400 years. But, you know, we're going to do a black history uh, program coming up in June, June 26. I guess I'll put that plug in now. Uh, we're gonna, and we're going to show you more about this Arab slave trade right here. Now, let's get to that next slide right here. Now, he said this is a triangle trade, right? It says, uh, this map shows why the slave trade was also known as the triangle trade. On their journey between Europe, Africa, and America, they forgot Asia. But anyway, slave ships traveled a triangle path around the Atlantic Ocean. Now look, it traveled around the Atlantic Ocean. Remember we said they don't come from afar to get you, Israel? They traveled around the Atlantic Ocean. Now look. You can't find nobody, no other people that fit this but us. You can't find no other people that fit this but us. Now look at what it said right here. According to the most accurate estimates of modern historians, at least 24 million Africans were captured to satisfy, satisfy the European demand for slaves. Millions of them died from hunger and disease even before they reached the coast. But millions more had to endure the terrible sea crossings to the Americas. 24 million slaves in, Euro in the European continent alone. Okay. 24 million slaves. Okay, we're going to turn back to it. I forgot this part. It just gets worse, though. <laughs> okay, it says the background of slavery lies in combination of precedent, ethnocentrism, and greed. During the 1500s and 1600s, slavery was a common institution. Slavery was practiced in Europe, Asia, Africa, and America. That's the four continents, ain't it? Four continents. He said, you're going to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And indeed, we have been removed into, nobody else fits this. You know, why is it that people, when they read the Bible and they hear this, they don't believe it? But then when you ask them to say, look, well, show me the people that fit this then. Mm -hmm. They can't show you. Well, you know, I got my notes, and I've been studying this, and, uh, okay, where are your notes at? Where you, you show me what you've been studying. I've been waiting for 10 years for this. And nobody has pulled up no notes. I mean, I got gray hair, balding. You understand, my wife this morning, you need to cut your hair. <laughs> you understand? Still waiting on somebody to show me. This is, you had an Edomite to come on YouTube and say, well, you know what? These black people said that they're not Israelites. Well, look, we got some people that was in slavery, too. Now, they showed a few people over here that was on some concentration camp. We're talking about Israel being removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Right. 
Not just in some little old concentration camp right here in this little concentration camp over there. Get serious, man. Let's go now. Let's go to, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to the uh, Negro slave. Yeah, go to the next one. Because he said, you're going to be um, sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, didn't he? Yeah. So now look at this right here. It says to be sold a cargo of 94 uh, uh, prime healthy Negroes. Well, y'all know who the Negroes are, don't you? Who the Negroes? Y'all ain't got to be scared to say it. You know we the Negroes. But the Lord said, he said, and the Lord shall breathe thee in the eagle again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And look at this right here. He said, uh, uh, 94 prime healthy Negroes, consisting of 39 uh, men, uh, what's that? 15 boys, 24 women, and 16 girls. And this is in, uh, uh, from Sierra Leone, from Africa, right? From Sierra, Sierra Leone. And look at the men auctioning them off, this, this uh, man, his wife, and a child auctioning all three of them off. Now, who fits this but us? What, the, what, what God got written in the Bible? Don't nobody fit this but us? All right. We don't want to look at that too long, do we? Right. Get a little depressed. <laughs> let's go now. Let's go. Let's go to uh let's go to Deuteronomy 32nd chapter, Deuteronomy 32. Because the Lord said he was gonna do this. But look what else he said he was gonna do to us. Deuteronomy 32, read that verse 26. 32 and 26. When you get it, go ahead and read it. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I, and 